Uh, free throws were huge today. I guess talk about the free throws you hit down the stretch, Alex, and then Malcolm, if you could take over after that and, and talk about your career high performance. Yeah, you know, free throws played a big part in the game today. Uh, I missed too early, so, you know, uh, those kind of hurt us early because the game could have been different from there on out. So uh, towards the end of the game when I was going to the line, I just knew I had to make up for it somehow and uh, just made sure that I had to make my – but, you know, the other guys did a great job of making free throws too. Uh, we haven't been as good the last couple games, so I feel like free throws kind of won this game for us today. Yeah, I feel like um, the same thing Ella said, you know, free throws definitely, you know, you had to make free throws at home, you know, home team advantage. So we just definitely had to uh, make free throws and layups, you know, so that definitely sealed the game for us. Prior to my boy Alo for at the end, big free throw. <laughs> Tyler, start with you over here to your left, all the way up here. How how much of a sense of relief? I know there's still so much work to do, but for all you guys to to play a big time opponent, to take it down the stretch, and to finally have the good things happen after a season where a lot of these opportunities you've lost because you weren't able to make winning plays and you were able to close it out today. How good does that feel? Um, it's a very good feeling. Um, it's a confidence booster for sure. Um, I feel like going into these next couple of games, we have a different swagger about ourselves. We just beat a top twenty five team. Um, we knew we could do it before the game, but it's just a confidence booster at the end of the day. Can you ask that question again? Just, just the fact that you finally, how good does it feel to finally get a big win and make it a winning play at the end of the game? Oh, it's a great feeling because we've been working so hard. You know, the coach has been doing a great job of putting us in the right situations, and uh, we kind of let them down a couple times towards the end of the game. And uh, I'm just so glad that we came together as a team and as a family, as a brotherhood, to end the game off. And, uh, just won the game for them. Uh, we did that for the coaches and for the city. Uh, we owed them that, and uh, we just got to keep pushing forward. What, what didn't, what happened at the beginning of that game? I think it was like what five or six minutes or something. Like nobody could make a shot. Yeah, you know, uh, our mindset was on the defensive end and boxing out. Uh, I feel, I'll say that that was our main focus. Uh, you know, obviously offense got to come around, but we just wanted to make sure that we was just you know trying to box out, uh, play defense, and. Uh, the offense was going to come around regardless. So we just didn't make the open shots that we usually make uh, one anything in particular. But, you know, our mindset was on defense today. Hey, Lo. Uh, this is a, you lost to Houston three times last year. What kind of confidence it gives you by beating them this year? And talk about the atmosphere of, the, of this game in this, today. Um, you know, it gave us a lot of confidence, even though uh, we have already knew that what we can do and what we're capable of. But uh, to not have DJ, one of our best players, and we still can't gonna accomplish this, uh, it just let us know that uh, the sky's still the limit. And uh, you know, there's just a lot of confidence for us in the team that we're gonna ride this wave, and uh, we just wanna try to keep keep on winning out. Uh, over here in the corner, question for Malcolm. Yep, yep. Um, start of the season, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, recovering from your ACL injury, just uh, kind of tell us. The journey and it, and then having a breakout game this game. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, you know, it's a um, definitely a recovery process. You know, I'm back early because you know my surgery uh, was supposed to be my surgery recovery was supposed to be a year. You know, I had surgery on March 18th, March 18th for my uh, ACL and meniscus. So you know, I was just supposed to be chilling this year and getting back right. You know, for next year, but uh, I started passing tests, or whatever. You know, so I, I felt healthy. You know, so it's just a process each game. You know, when I'm feeling good, you know, good, great things going to happen. Alo, you basically had to play this to save the game, to knock away all the, on the offensive rebound. Walk us through that last play and what were you thinking? It was just you being being you making the play? Yeah, the, uh, I knew I knew Princess had an ISO, uh, and I and I was just – I knew he was going to get a shot up regardless. So my main goal was to just go and try my best to box somebody out. I wasn't even worried about the shot. I couldn't watch the play because I knew it was time for an offensive rebound. So – uh, I just personally want to just go box out somebody. And uh, as the ball went in the air, I boxed my man, but somebody else came and got the ball. So I saw that he was kind of being careless with it with like one or two seconds left. And I just made a play on the ball and just wanted to uh, try to end the game and took it. And uh, this kind of just what happened. I saw a ball and, you know, just my instincts. Hey, Lou, it seemed like you flipped a switch around the nine-minute mark, ten-minute mark in the first half where you just started getting really disruptive and stripping, stripping the ball away. There was a kind of a long sequence where – you were being really disruptive. So, uh, did you can I mean, talk uh, talk to us about that? Um, I was just you know getting in the flow of the game. You know, probably just started breaking the switch. You know, 
you know, getting a little looser. And, uh, you know, Tyler made some big plays with me. Uh, he talked to me, and uh, we got we got the trap man right there. So it was mainly just the momentum of the team and me just getting loose and uh, finding myself on the court. <clears throat> Fralo, finish that play. So so did you know when you knocked that out of bounds that it was going to be your – did you know how it was going to go with the replay at the end, or what was your thought, thought there? I honestly didn't know. Uh, I felt like it was going to be a foul because some guy fell on my leg and, and like, kind of knocked me out of bounds. I didn't even know where the ball went after that. But when I got up, I just knew the buzzer went off. So – I thought the game was over. Right. So I really didn't know what to expect. I thought you I was going to gonna be at the free throw line. Honestly. You got to celebrate twice, and at the end you were popping your jersey. How'd that feel to pop your jersey? Uh, it felt great. You know, just we did that for the city, and uh, like I said, we owed them something, and uh, I feel like that was a good good win for us. And last question for both you and Tyler. Is this the most desperate the team played? It felt like there was a level of desperation tonight that almost hasn't been there prior to the season. Um, yes, I think um, everybody was desperate. I know for sure um, we focused on all the little things like boxing out, you know, getting on the floor, getting all the 50-50 balls. So I would say everybody on the court, every man was locked in tonight. Uh, every game from here on out is desperate. Uh, we should have been that way from the beginning, but, you know, it's when, it's when or going home now. So we got to be desperate for every game for the rest of the season, no matter what. Yeah, like Alo said right now, it's when to go home every game. Tyler, you told us earlier this week, back here to your left, you, you told us earlier this week that uh, – you, you felt like people around the country were, you know, kind of having fun with you guys' struggles. Mm -hmm. How good does it feel now that, you know, that you guys are making a push when it matters most into March with all these people that are doubting you? You talked about playing desperate, mm -hmm. but how good does it feel playing knowing that there's so many doubters out there and you have an opportunity to kind of flip that switch? Uh, it always feels good, you know, playing, you know, having your back against the wall, you know, just all the outside noise, everybody down us. So, um, we want to go on the court and show them that, you know, we're still a top 10 team in the nation. Malcolm, you uh, caught them two back-to-back -back alleys from Damien. Is that just something that unfolded, or did you notice uh, that you had a mismatch you could exploit to make that happen? No, it was definitely both. You know, Damien is just, just a playmaker. You know, that's what he's looking for anyway. You know, I remember watching him in high school. So uh, he can get down here, create a trigger any time, and throw the ball, you know. Both of these, everybody, you know, all guards can. So uh, that was just Reeves and playing basketball. Yeah, Damian Ball said he had band 10. <laughs> <laughs> little, little jaw, we call him the little jaw. Yeah, it's jaw. Baby jaw. This is for all three of you guys. When, when things aren't going well, it seems like you, you feed off the crowd to kind of get you guys going. How much does the crowd play an impact to you kind of getting revved up and, and playing basketball? Um, at home, you know, the crowd is our six man. You know, we got six players on the court, you know. Crowd is it's the best. It's the best player for us. So the more we got the crowd, the better we're gonna play. Yeah, um, just the crowd. It just give you a boost and everything. I feel like it just boosts you on, you know, jumping higher. You know, making more shots, making free throws. Just like Alo said, it's our six man. Last question, Malcolm. What do you make of the Tyler said it was a confidence. This is obviously a confidence booster. Mm -hmm. um, if you could. Do you, I mean, obviously, I would assume you agree with that. And then also the eight turnovers, just eight turnovers mm -hmm. today. So whoever wants to take that one. No, I feel like it's a plus. You know, uh, I agree with Tyler when he said, you know, this is, you know, what is it? Confidence booster. Oh, yeah, for sure. This, this dub, you know, <laughs> we be the top a top 25 team, you know. So the whole country want us to fail. So we just doing it for the city, you know. So whenever we get a dub, beating top 25 teams at home, that's for the city. That's for us. So, of course, it feels good. Yeah, everything for the city. Amazing game for us, uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, a lot of the things that we did today, we haven't been doing. We worked on it in practice and really hadn't shown it for 40 minutes. And today, I felt like for 40 minutes, we showed who we were and the, and who we could be uh, defensively and offensively. Um, even though we didn't score but 60 points, it was like the, the, the shots that we got were quality shots. Uh, proud of the team for just going out there and just being warriors, getting 30 free throws, which is big for us. We didn't shoot the ball well, but we did all the tough things to win this game. So. Just very proud of that. Hey, Coach, just a little role reversal today. You played your worst basketball the first six minutes of the game. You made winning plays at the end. How, how big can this be confidence-wise going forward for the, your team? 
Yeah, just to talk about the first six minutes, the nerves were just there. But I know I knew that Sasser had made two transition threes and that we could calm that down, that we could get back into the game. But I do like that we didn't we, we didn't start it well, but I do like that we did finish it well. We finished it with a stop, a box out, and a rebound. So that was that was huge for us. Yeah, Penny. After the 60 points, the bench goal 28, how, how do you feel about the bench stepping up? Oh, I said that was the first thing I said in our at the, at the meeting uh, after um, after the game was I'm very proud of the bench. They came in and sparked us because that's when the run came when they checked into the game, and that's what you want from your bench. You want your bench to come out and produce. And Tyler and Alo have been producing all season, and for Malcolm to have the game that he had today, very proud of him. Penny, the word used over and over again for the last two weeks has been desperate, desperate, desperate. That last possession, is that what desperate basketball No doubt like? about it. And uh, <laughs> it came down to a one-on-one -on -one stop. That's what we lost against Georgia. We lost that battle against SMU. We lost that battle against uh, South Florida. Today we won that battle, so we're learning. We're learning from it. Penny, Penny, just to follow up on that, that one-on-one -on -one stop, both those last two possessions you had, I don't know if it was because of the switch or whether it was a – that's what I'm asking, whether it was a strategic move, having Precious on – Caleb Mills there, was that an adjustment you made or was that just how it worked out with the switch? No, it actually how it worked out, which um, I was very happy with that decision uh, for them to set one more screen with Precious's guy because they're used to going against bigs every night. And if you're going to have a big out there, they look at Precious as a big. We don't look at Precious as a big. He's really a guard on defense for sure. He can guard one through five. And for him to be in that situation, I felt very confident. Caleb Mills is a talent, though. He's a guy that you – he has nice hesitation, nice nice go-to moves, and can make big shots to be a freshman, a redshirt freshman. And it just worked out that Precious was on him two times. Um, Coach, last year you guys went down to the wire against Houston in the conference semis. After that game, Coach Sampson made a point of emphasizing how good of a team you inherited. How good or how satisfying is it to not only go down to the wire, but go beyond that and beat them with a team that's entirely yours after the way this season has gone. Yeah, I kind of understood, um, you know, Coach Sampson is a fierce competitor, and uh, we were left with a lot of seniors, you know, and veteran guys winning, winning that league. So I can understand what he was saying, but, you know, like you said, to have freshmen come in today and show up and play against a team of that magnitude, you know, he's been there six years, he's built his culture, he has the, the guys that he wants, and he's locked in. I'm, very, I'm definitely very proud of that because I have a lot of respect for him. If Tennessee was your biggest, the biggest one of your career, where does this one rank? Uh, this is, this might be 1A. Like really, it's really high because of, you know, the having freshmen play against that type of a group. Um, they're one of the most aggressive teams in the country. Uh, they usually smash you and intimidate you with all the physicality and their length. And uh, our team stepped up on the, uh, to the challenge. But yeah, Tennessee first and then this win. Coach Penny, right here. Um, free throws seem like a crucial aspect in uh, today's game. Uh, you guys attempted eight free throws in the first half, but 22 in the second half. Was that a locker room adjustment to be more physical in the paint? Yeah, we kind of switched some things up so that we can kind of get into the paint more. Uh, we noticed some things on film. We always watch film at halftime and kind of made some adjustments. And, you know, just going to give credit to the guys for getting in there and making the plays happen to shoot 30 free throws today. They were definitely – every free throw was needed. Penny, um, with all of the with all the close contests that you've had, opportunities to win games where you weren't able to get it, how much of a sense of relief is it to to finally show your guys that you know you can make winning plays and they, it will end up right as you sit here five games now or four games now from the end of the season? Yeah, no, I'm I'm very relieved. Um, just just proud that you know the guys can see the other side of it. We've been we've been losing some some heartbreakers at the end. Uh, some of it, a lot of it's self inflicting wounds. And the guys are learning from it because we had eight turnovers today, but we didn't have any late. And um, we we steadied the ship and, and got a win instead of, you know, at the end of the game, losing it to the next team. So, yeah, I'm very proud of that and very relieved. What did you – shifting gears a little bit, what did you think of uh, James's interview that aired last night in the comments? I didn't I'm, – I'm, I'm being honest. I really didn't see it, so I can't really make a comment on it. Um, I, didn't, I didn't see the interview. I've started being promoted, but I haven't seen like the full interview or the interview at all. Hey, Penny, um, big win, but you got a very short turnaround. You have a pivotal game on 
month, Tuesday. So what do you tell your team to make them forget this but continue to do what they need to do to well, win we need to, We need to carry it over, and there shouldn't be much motivation because we had a 12-point lead with seven minutes to go against SMU and gave it away. They went on a 15-0 run in our building. So that's enough motivation to, to know what we have to do when we go to SMU. So it, it, it's not going to take much for them to get up for that game. In terms of the turnovers, you mentioned it, Penny. Is that just a function of the fact that the team was locked in? To only have eight is just what can happen when the team is locked when you're locked in from the very beginning. Yeah, they locked in for sure. Like a lot of times, they get a little wild, but today they knew how important this game was. They didn't try a lot of stuff like they usually do, and then we kind of harnessed a lot of that. We kind of kept it to a minimum of what could really happen, but also they kicked in and didn't try to do anything. They wanted to win the game so badly that they they focused on doing what we needed to do to, to win. Coach, you talked about uh, playing desperate. How much do you pay attention to the bracketology and how much does your coaching staff and your players pay attention to it? I haven't paid attention to it at all. I understand math and I understand what needs to happen in my mind. So honestly, I don't have to look at the bracketology to know that. And you have to be teams like this to be in the conversation. So that's, that's all I know. I don't really look. I don't know about our coaches, but we really never talk about it. We look at what's in front of us and go, if we do this, then this can happen. Penny, is it safe to say that this team's identity has become its defense? Uh, there's no way you win today without those three stops in the last three minutes. Is that kind of yeah, what I mean, this team has become? It's ironic or really weird, to be more exact, for a freshman laden, laden, team, laden team with being one of the better defensive field goal percentage groups in the country. It doesn't work like that. And for that to be us right now, uh, it feels good. I mean, the offensive side, of course we would want more points. But you're going to win championships and win games with defense. And we've gotten enough stops in other games and just couldn't, couldn't bring it home. But to finish the game with three stops is great. Penny, um, Kelvin Sampson had some high praise for you as he walked out of here today saying that, you know, you talked earlier this week about the criticism and, you know, it comes with the territory. But to hear a coach like him who's kind of been through it all, he said, he said you and Frank Haith at Tulsa may be the coaches of the year in this conference. To hear him say that after everything you've gone through and everything you've had to deal with, your thoughts? No, I, I definitely appreciate that because, like I said, I hold Coach Sampson at a very high, high, at high level. I mean, he's he's a guy that that's seen everything. We've talked a lot at our coaches' meetings, and I pick his brain, and we just talk. And for him to say that, it means a lot because, man, we're really fighting. We've had a lot. We've gotten hit with a lot of haymakers this year as a team, and to keep fighting with these guys and to keep pushing forward and to keep getting wins. Obviously, I think it's unfair for the boys to get the criticism. All of it can, do, can deflect on me because I can handle that. I know what comes along with it. I know why I got into this job. I got into this job to make a difference for our city, for our school, and try to get, get us back to where we need to get to. So the noise doesn't hurt me. It just, it, it, it's, it's a little troubling when they're talking about the kids because these kids are really fighting hard. But, no, I, I, I appreciate Coach Sampson for, for saying that. Thank you. Thank you.